ladies and gentlemen of the media. As you are aware, we were part of a delegation from the Ghana Elections Commission that met with the President this morning at his invitation to discuss the readiness of GCOM to conduct the general regional elections in 2019. There's a prepared statement uh, which will be read by Commissioner Bibi Shadik, and thereafter we'll field questions from you. Uh, on Friday, today, March 8th, we, the opposition nominated commissioners, responded to an invitation from President David Granger to meet with members of the Ghana Elections Commission to initiate consultation on the readiness of GCOM <coughs> to conduct general and regional elections 2019. At the meeting, to our astonishment, the president was accompanied by a large delegation of ministers. There was the Prime Minister, Moses Nagamutu, Minister of State, Joseph Harmon, Minister of Public Security, Kemra Jatan, Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Chotman, Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, uh, Sidney Ali Cock, Minister of Social Protection, Amna Ali, and the estimable senior counsel, Attorney General Basil Williams. This was surprising in light of the fact that none of these persons has any statutory or other function related to the conduct of elections. The meeting degenerated in one, into one of the usual statutory meetings of the Commission, where no urgency is ever given to the holding of elections, as is constitutionally mandated, but instead, focus was placed on a house-to-house -house registration exercise. We attempted to submit a written proposal which contemplates the holding of elections in the shortest possible time, that is, before the expiry of the current official list of electors on the 30th of April, 2019. This submission was not allowed. Instead, the government nominated commissioners insisted that house-to-house -house registration was necessary before the conduct of elections. It is appropriate to know that any house-to-house -house exercise will take in excess of nine months, and that Commissioner Alexander himself stated at the meeting that with house-to-house -house registration, elections could be held in February of 2020. This position was mirrored by almost all of the ministers who accompanied the president. To our surprise, the president then asked each of the ministers present to share their views. Almost all of them spoke of the need for house-to-house -house re registration. Instead of the expected consultation with GCOM to determine its readiness, the engagement manifested into an obvious attempt to pressure the opposition-nominated commissioners and GCOM into adopting the position being advocated by the government and the APMO and EFC regarding house to house registration. Frankly, all those people being present made us feel that we were a minority. And then, then each one of them was allowed to speak. And then each one of them is almost telling us that you need to come to an agreement, an agreement which was very obvious to the president who voiced that, that there is no place that there is going to be agreement. There are two different things. So the question was asked of the president whether he was interested in elections at the earliest possible date or elections after house to house registration. Those are two very different things. And since he would have to meet with the leader of the opposition to, to get some agreement into what is happening Parliament, then he had to decide which one of them he was going with. It was obvious that the whole machinery that was there was there to tell us, the three of us, that you need to agree with these people and let a, let a decision come out of GCOM that there is need for house house registration before an election. Oh, and this mentions a, a timeline that I shared with with um, which I wasn't allowed to, to give to the president because Mr. Basil Williams said since it didn't come out of the commission, then it could not be accepted. Um, a submission that we, the three of us, have got together, which showed that the submissions are being made in the context that there is a valid voters list up to April 30th, that there is a constitutional mandate for general and regional elections within the shortest possible time, and the plan that was submitted there today contemplates a 50 days time frame. 
And the plan also contemplates a possible election date of April 29th, which is the, happens to be the last Monday before the list expires. And so we went through, this plan goes through, nomination date, the elections day, a period of 40 days, which came from a submission that the CEO gave to all commissioners, showing that what could happen in 40 days with, and so on. This I shared, I attempted to share with the president, but uh, they thought that he shouldn't take it. Um, nomination, therefore, would have been March 26th to allow for 40 days before the election date of April 29th. And this is based on the timeline of the, the, the document provided to us by the CEO on the 23rd of January, and who had indicated that his 35 days didn't cater for a few extra days. But he did a second one for 40 days, which catered for a little more leeway. And the timeline, the timeline he gave us included printing of ballot papers. And it also talked about events preliminary to nomination day for 10 days, that is, March 12th to 25th, excluding Sundays and holidays, which would allow sending invitations to interested parties to send in their, to submit lists and so on for nomination day. Now, the other activities that we think are, are activities that could have been done concurrently during the same 50 days. First of those was training, testing, and selection of election day staff. 42 days, according to this plan, is given for that. June 2018, in preparation for LG, in November, a total of 10,500 persons were trained, of which just over 7,005 were used for those elections. Now, training manuals have been corrected and printed. Training aids are currently being acquired. That is, GCOM is there. There is need for approximately 12,000 staff to work in 2,356 polling stations countrywide. Hence, there is need to train about 3,000 new people and to retrain, where necessary, any of the 10,500. And this is the timeline that was given. 11 days to advertise and invite persons for training and retraining where necessary. 21 days to hold daily training programs in an intensive training exercise all over the country to train and retrain all staff needed. If, as it is claimed, that mostly teachers apply to work, then those who are to be trained can and should be given the necessary time off to attend the training exercises, which is only two to three days at most for any group of trainees. And then 10 days to evaluate, select, and appoint the polling gay staff. That can be done in 42 days, leaving eight days before the election date if they have. And this exercise is the primary responsibility of the HR department. So it isn't as if there is a, the same people doing all these things. Concurrently, procurement and set of sensitive and non-sensitive materials could be done. And again, the timeline given is 42 days. And all the necessary waivers can and should be given to allow GCOM to sole source the materials, especially from outside of Ghana, because there are things that you can't buy in Ghana in order to avoid unnecessary delays. The chief elections officer has or should have a list of all materials needed, what is currently on hand, what can be sourced locally, and what needs to be sourced internationally. And the technology exists within GCOM to electronically source any and all materials needed and payments can be wired wherever needed in a matter of days, sometimes in a matter of hours. This exercise is the responsibility of the council department with input from the chief elections officer. So that's two different sets. The third component is civic and voter education, and that can go from Monday the 11th of March till the election day. I said this very important component of any elections process is an ongoing one, which can be competently coordinated and executed by the GCOM's public relations officer and that department. We had infomercials and other materials which were procured for the local government elections, which can be used with very little changes, just some words and so on. And finally, we addressed the issue of financing because one of the bugbears that has been raised is that there is no money for holding elections. And I said, since this has been raised as an issue by Commissioners Alexander Corbin and Trotman, and accepted by the chairman and CEO, the following is submitted. For the year 2019, and according to the Honorable Minister of Finance, the sum of $5,371,061,000 is given as a lump sum to GCOM to use as it sees fit and, and as it prioritizes. And those were the, the, the 
correct the, the words, exact words of the finance minister in parliament on the 19th of November. Then section 80B8 of the FMAA Act states, the appropriation of a constitutional agency approved by the National Assembly shall be disbursed as a lump sum by the end of the month, following the month in which the appropriation is approved. And I've noted in contravention of the law, and I brought this to the attention of the president verbally, this was not accepted, but I raised this, that in contravention of this law, the CEO has informed the commission that the said lump sum appropriation has not yet been disbursed to GCO. And up to today, the CEO sat down there and said that was so. No money has been disbursed. Then Article 222A of the Constitution of Ghana states that in order to assure the independence of the entities listed in the third schedule, GCOM being one of those, the expenditure of each of the entities shall be financed as a direct charge in the consolidated fund, determined as a lump sum by way of an annual subvention approved by the National Assembly after review and approval of the entity's annual budget, and as a part of the process of the determination of the national budget. Each entity shall manage its subvention in such manner as it deems fit for the efficient discharge of its functions, subject only to conformity with the financial practices and procedures approved by the National Assembly to ensure accountability. And all revenue shall be paid into consolidated fund. From this, it is clear that the monies that were appropriated for GCOM can be used for whatever function GCOM has to carry out, which it has to prioritize. In our opinion, elections are a priority. Given all of the above, it is our submission that GCOM has to prioritize general and region, region elections contemplated by Article 1067 of the Constitution of Ghana and therefore must utilize any portion of its $5,271,000, $5,071,000,000 and $61,000 to meet the necessary expenses. And we submitted this to three commissioners, B.B. Shadik, Says Raj, and Rooks and Ben, dated today. We attached here the timeline that was given to us by the CEO, and this was left there, although it wasn't accepted to be given. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's our, our statement. Anybody has any questions? And if the president's not with you, what's next? You finish this meeting, what's the next step? We finish this meeting as all meetings of GCOM finish. There has been no, no decision. We felt that they called us there to pressure us into, into agreeing that house to house registration is necessary before an election is held. They kept banding about the word credible. My thing is that GCOM has never set out to hold any election which was not credible. And this election can be no different. Just Mr. let me say. Mr. Dick, you said that you were not allowed to present it to the president. I wanted to give the document to the president, who seemed willing to accept it, but Basil Williams intervened and said, no, we cannot accept a, a, a document that didn't come from the commission, that came from, you know, people outside. So. But this was supposed to be a consultation with the commission. It was supposed to be. The president to begin with. There was a, was a different views. Uh -huh. I thought it was an engagement with the, the different commissioners to understand their views. That so was our understanding. And the president, in fact, said as much when he began to speak. To answer your question a little bit more pointedly, we brought it to the attention of the president that the consultation oh, that right. he had invited us to was not one that was done with the GCOM collective solely. It was done with the individual members of the commission uh, because the recognition that the commission has failed to reach a consensus on these issues has come to the fore. And I found it very strange that the individual views of one or some commissioners, which we sought to present in a doc documentary fashion, was not accepted. Was not even considered not accepted because well, if no one looked at it, 
the, the thing is, at this point, if we were, in all fairness to the process, if we were going to submit it at this point, we did not, we could not expect any meaningful consideration of it at that point. But the reality is it did not even pass muster. That is to say, acceptance for consideration. The government's legal advisor ruled it out. But what is, what is very glaring is that the president asked the CEO of GCOM whether GCOM had a plan, a work plan for election. And the CEO said no. He asked the CEO that twice, and the CEO said no, we have no work plan. An approved work plan. No, no work plan, even for discussion. There was nothing that the, 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 the chief elections officer presented in the nature of what we were trying to present. And in fact, when I was trying to present this to the president, I said, sir, we thought that we came here to help you to understand how GCOM can be ready in the shortest possible time. So we got together and did this document to assist you in that, in that understanding. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that I doubt that um, this engagement will break the current impasse at the Guyana Elections Commission. And I think I did point out the impotency of the commission. Firstly, the inordinate delay in getting on with the activities related to the holding of elections as required by the constitutional imperatives consequent on the no confidence vote of December 21st. The second issue relates to how far apart we are in respect of the holding of these elections. The position that we here have on this side, the opposition nominated commissioners, to me best equates with what is constitutionally required, what is constitutionally mandated. That is 90 days from the date of the passage of a no confidence vote. The position adopted by the commissioners nominated by the government, by the president, and, the chairman. and also by the chairman, is that house to house registration has to be done before any elections could be held and could be deemed credible. The issue of house to house registration requires, and if I am adopt the latest position, which seems to be a shift again of Commissioner Alexander, who spoke extensively on he this matter. February. He said February. The last engagement we had with him at the commission itself, and he spoke to, to the press at the end of every commission meeting, and after us, he said maybe it could be done in six months when he had previous, when it was previously said it would be nine months. But today he said February, February which is one year away almost practically for the holding of any elections. The fact that we have had the other ministers there and as I've said that they, they appear to be an AP, a new AFC construct for those who represented on the other side uh, in respect of the government. And given the fact of their utterances relating to the question of house to house registration goes along with their complicity in delaying the elections as far as possible, as long as possible, to have it until 2020 and to push the country into crisis come February the 24th, March the 24th, sorry, in a month's time or, or, or so. What was clear to us is that with each utterance of each minister is that the three of us were not playing nice and we had a duty to conform and to come to a decision 
well, that is that is the, held by the rest of the people. That we were the, the spoiled sports. We were not prepared to to go with the majority. And so each one of those people sitting there was directly, I think, speaking to us to say, stop making that kind of noise and let GCOM make a decision and tell the president there can be no elections before the end of house house registration. And I think we left there and they very, very well knew that we would, we would submit to no such pressure. They tried. They tried. They talked about bloated lists. They talked about all kinds of ghosts on the list. They talked about all. And they kept saying that there had been complaints about lists. That's not true. They kept saying that a, a petition was, was filed because of, of, of a bad list. That's not true. The petition was filed on issues that had to do with people going to vote who weren't, who weren't even on the list, you know, that kind of thing. It had nothing to do with lists. But they are willing, because when we talked about the list being valid and proper, the president said that has been debunked because Minister Ali said that they had been complaints. But there may have been complaints to Mr. Ali. I have never seen one at GCOM. They're talking about something happening in Mabruma. Had nothing to do with a list. It had to do with them dismissing a returning officer because they claimed that he gave proxies to the wrong people. This is the kind of, of, of kerfufflement they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that lineup of, of ministers flanking the president, I think, was meant to deflate us and to say, oh, you know what? We are the little people here. We should toe the line and, uh, uh, and come to a consensus. Commissioner, I'm, I'm going to go back to the question I asked when you had your last press conference. Obviously, we're faced with a commission that are a group of people who do not intend to comply with the Constitution. Yeah. What form of recourse legally do the citizens, anyone, has to ensure constitutional compliance? Because as it, as it goes, we might very well end up in 2025 not having any elections. You, if you're, it continues like that. you're asking the commissioners yeah. who are at GCON. Yeah. The thing is that while two of us might be lawyers, we don't serve there because we're lawyers. We do that. that legal story has to be discussed to another level. But at our last meeting, when I asked the chairman, are you willing to sit there as the, at the head of an agency which is inexorably taking this country into a constitutional crisis. First, somebody said I was bullying him, Chalkman. And then I asked the question again. I said, Mr. Chairman, do you feel like? He said, no. I said, OK, I'm asking you the question. Will you give me an answer? He said, and he smiled, and he said, not at this time. So the president could not answer me. But in effect, that's what he's doing. He's sitting there, and, and, and in taking the side of, of, the, of the three government nominated commissioners whose song is house house registration you know the, 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 it's an extension of I think what happened at, at Congress place war if no house to house no election whatever to me the song they're singing there is just the chorus to that and today's whole exercise I think was meant to intimidate us before before we take our leave I want to uh, deal with an issue that was raised uh, in the meeting, and I believe it was raised publicly after as well, that as is uh, publicly known, there, the last two meetings of the commission saw the three of us walking out of those meetings. And an accusation of sorts was leveled today in that engagement that our walking out uh, is pushing towards this crisis uh, that is looming. Now, I want to debunk that and reject it out of hand to say this. At both of those meetings that we walked out yes, from, it was quite planned. obvious that there was no discussion uh, planned or ongoing about the holding of elections. And I maintain that we have an obligation because of all the circumstances that are now uh, repeated ad nauseum. We have an obligation to hold elections, and we will not be held hostage in any meeting to discuss any matter 
that is not touching and concerning and directly related to the holding of elections. You said that there is no work plan, that no work plan was produced. For holding of elections, holding no. Of elections. No, I've been asking for that all the time. Up to now. And in fact, the last two meetings when we walked out, it was after the minutes were done, we asked for if there is a work plan for us to discuss that is taking us to elections in the shortest possible time. There is no such plan. So in the absence of any such plan, what they keep saying is GCOM's program of activities that they had budgeted for house to house and whatever it is. In fact, GCOM activities included a period of continuous registration and claims and objections and so on to renew the list that ends at the end of April. That has now been skipped over. So come the end of April, there will be no valid list, which I pointed out, which was pointed out to the president today. The thing is, but nobody seems concerned about that. The whole thing is holding of house to house registration. No plan to have elections in 100 days, or in five days, or in 48 days, or in whatever. No plan. So this led from the president urging GCOM to prepare for elections. He's not talking about that anymore. He's talking about the one where he promised to have consultations with Chica. And he says he thinks, he didn't know that there was so much confusion over two letters. He thinks one complements the other. So he's only referring to the fact that he promised to consult with Chica, and that's why he called us. He, he's skipping over the fact that he urges them to start. I think um, there is, or was evident in our frustrated attempt, as it were, to put the ball back in GCOM's court mm -hmm. and to lay the blame on GCOM, mm -hmm. but principally on the commissioners on the opposition nominated side mm -hmm. of V3, mm -hmm. Ben, Shadik, and Gonraj, as to where we are. And this is why I'm pointing out that our position, if it is examined clearly by any logical, rational person, accords with the Constitution. And that every other position, any other position, the position which they are advocating is an extreme one designed to delay the holding of elections. Furthermore, there has been recently been an implied trip by remarks coming from Commissioner Trotman, which he uttered again uh, yeah. today, about there will be trouble there will be trouble if elections are not held at the house of house registration and, and things like that. Well, it appears as though Commissioner Trotman has control of the dogs of war. There's been talk at some place about dancing, about there can be war, and now there's this implied threat which is re repeated, has been repeated several times at, at GCOM commission. meetings and was repeated today at the office of the president in the presence of His Excellency. I think these utterances are extremely unfortunate and go along with the intention to pressure us to move from the constitutional imperatives which we have. We will continue to stick with the constitutional imperatives which require that we hold elections at the mandated 90-day period from the time of the no confidence uh, vote or else based on a resolution of a two-thirds majority of the parliament. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be any different. It shouldn't be any way different. And I don't know that we're in a position to move from that. We yeah. cannot move from the constitutional position. And so these threats and things will have to go by the wayside. And I yeah. hope that the international community and national and local observers will take note of these implied threats in respect of the holding of the elections in the absence of house to house registration. I pointed out that GCOM has robust measures which have worked in the last two or three elections, as far as I'm aware, to prevent any person from voting who should not vote, and that there should be no wickedness or any great problem in relation to the integrity of the poll in relation to its credibility. 
Surprisingly now, this question of a list and whether it's clean or not, even though the chief elections officer said that the list was clean. Of course. He did say publicly that the list is, GCOM has a clean list. The intention appears to be somehow for us to go into crisis, to have the list go into abeyance, and we don't know what next will happen as a result of that. But we do not have any other position but to hold on to the, our constitutional imperatives as commissioners of GCOM to uphold the Constitution of Guyana as it relates to the question of elections under these circumstances and what is logical, rational, and reasonable in the circumstances. I will make one statement that whenever we go to GCOM meetings and if there is not a plan that will take us to elections in the shortest possible time while we have a list, then I, we reserve the right to not participate in any other discussion as to house-to-house -to -house registration and whatever. Mr. Alexander and whoever it is can say what they want, but they cannot force us to sit there and to agree that what is needed is house-to-house -house registration. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.